joining us for Season 5, Episode 7 of Adventures in Fly Time. And now here's your host, Joe Cornwall. Welcome to another episode of Adventures in Fly Tying. Today we have a very interesting fly for you. Of course, we're getting towards the end of the season, and you may be watching this at any point in the season, but this is a great end of the season fly when the waters are low and clear and skinny, and you're fishing for trout, and they're wary, and they're tough, and they've been pressured all season long. Vince Marinaro created this fly ba back in the late 1950s when he first introduced it in a modern dry fly code. And back then, of course, fishing small meant fishing size 18 or size 20. Well, Vince Marinaro pushed the limits back then with a fly called the Jacid. The Jacid is not a fly we see very often today, but it's still a great fly to have in your kit, and I love to fish it. The Jacid is actually an imitation of a leaf hopper, but it's often also taken as an imitation of a beetle. Typically, fished in size 22, 20, or 18. Today we're going to tie it for you on a size 16 hook just to make it a little bit easier to film but remember that you can tie this fly in any size that you want and if you're really daring go ahead and try and tie this in a size 24 and even better try and see it on the water after you tied it. Let's get started. This is a great pattern. You can see that the jacet is actually a very simple pattern. I have a couple of them that I've tied here one in a size 16 and one in a size 18. Not too much of a difference but the fly itself is really reminiscent of a Griffith snat with nothing more than a palmered uh, hackle, uh, a very thin body, and a jungle cock nail, which is the carapace or the shell, and also it gives us that little spot so we actually can see this on the water. Now this is a fly that's designed for really smooth flows, particularly it was designed for the Latorte Creek, which of course is a spring creek in uh, eastern Pennsylvania, spectacular place to fish. Um, let's take a look at what we're going to use to tie this fly. First, the body material that we're going to use in this case is going to be a little bit of mole dubbing. Now, if you're tying this in size 20 or 22 or even smaller, simply using thread is enough of a body. You don't need to have much. But on the size 18s and 16s, a little bit of mole will make for a wonderful body on that. The body is then palmered with a hackle. The hackle can be, in the original, a black hackle. Or in this case, we're using grizzly hackle. And I like to use a saddle hackle. Simply very easy to tie a lot of flies from a single feather and make sure that you select a fly that's the right size for the hook that you're going to use. And then, of course, the final piece that makes the jacid the jacid is a jungle cock nail. Now, if you don't have a jungle cock cape, and a lot of people don't, for a long time these were illegal. It was difficult to get jungle cock in the 1970s and 1980s, which is one of the reasons that we really didn't see this fly too often. But lately, we're starting to see farm-raised jungle fowl that are being imported into the United States. They're easy to find you'll get them at a lot of fly shops, can order them for you, you can get them at fly tying shows. If you get a B-level cape, you'll probably spend a little bit under $100, $80 to $100, maybe even a little bit less than that, or you can get all the way up to a super cape for a couple of $300. But let's take a look at what we're going to use. These are the nails that are typically used for the cheeks on streamer flies. But if you come down here to these very small nails, they're seldom used on those streamer flies, but they're perfect for this jacid. That's what they're used for. Try and choose a jungle cock cape that has has lots of color and a minimum amount of split eyes. But once again, we're tying fishing flies, not show flies. So a little bit of a split on the nails is certainly not going to matter to the fish. Let's get started with this pattern. I'm going to use a standard dry fly hook. In this case, I'm using a Mustad 94 or a 94 840 dry fly hook. And for tying this, I'm going to use a size 16. But if I was fishing this, my favorite size is a size 18. Occasionally, I'll venture down to a 20. I have a personal belief in not fishing anything smaller than a 20 because I can't see it. And if I can't see it, I can't fish it. But in most instances, an 18 will do just fine. Great little beetle imitation. Start by using, we're using a 10-aught thread here. Lay down a simple thread body. And the first step that you want to do, select the correct hackle. You want to tie that hackle on so that the colored side of the hackle is facing up. That will allow the hackle fibers to splay out in the right direction as you wrap this palmered hackle. Once you've got that on there, what I'd like to do is use a little bit of this mold dubbing. and I'm going to clip a little bit off of here. You can see I don't have a lot of mold dubbing there, just a little tiny bit and you're going to make a very, very sparse body. So twist it very tightly onto that tying thread, just a little bit at a time, until you have a little 
mole yarn. Now, on the larger sizes, just like in a Griffith's Nat, you could certainly use a peacock curl for this as well. So if I was tying this in size 16 or even 14, and there's no reason that you can't, a peacock curl would make for a fantastic body on this. Uh, and once again, if you're tying in a size 20, uh, Vince Marinaro, when he tied his size 20s, simply used black tying thread as the body and a black hackle. We're going to use a grizzly hackle and a little bit of this very dark chocolate mole. Start your body. And just wrap that up the hook shank, keeping it nice and sparse. Give yourself a little bit of room at the end so that you have enough room to tie in the jungle cock nail and make a well-formed head. And you can see that I've given myself about one and a half times the hook eye to be able to finish off that fly. Now, about five wraps of this grizzly hackle will be more than sufficient to float this fly. Tie off that grizzly hackle with just a couple or three thread wraps. And thread control on these very small flies is very important. You want to use very thin thread. Once again, I'm using a 10 aught, which is a 45 denier. Now, this pattern, in order to make that jungle cock lay flat, you want to trim off all of those hackles from the top of that. Marinero actually trimmed to the bottom as well. Personally, I don't find that necessary. I think that the fly floats just fine with those hackles at the bottom. It gives me just a little bit more, but if you want to do that, you certainly can. Now, we've already pre-selected a jungle cock nail. The nail itself has got a waxy side, typically with a little bit of an orange, and then, of course, the back side of it. The waxy side is up. Measure that nail so it's the right length, and strip away the bottom of that nail, giving yourself just that little bit of a feather stem to tie it in. Lay that flat right on the top. Tie that in with three or four wraps. Now, here's a trick that I use. I just rub my finger back and fold that hackle stem over. That locks that in. That's not going to come out. Now, that's so all I have to do now. Add a little thread head to that. Throw in a whip finish. That's about as easy a fly as you can possibly want to tie. It is a super classic pattern with a tremendous amount of history, created right here in the United States to fish for brown trout. Isn't that a pretty little fly? Real simple. I'll tell you what, that is absolutely something you want to fish from, I'd say, late July all the way into early October, those low water conditions when terrestrials are out. What a fantastic little pattern. Vince Marinero's Jacid. It's a fly you don't see every day. Show them something different. And thanks for joining us on Adventures in Fly Tying.